You've seen the schedule. So let's not waste each other's time here because we don't have a lot of time doing the hard stuff that we need to do to get to where we want to go. This is about winning. It's about winning the world championship, period. It's time for another edition of the Mike McCarthy Show, powered by Reliant Energy inside the Globe Life studio here at the Star in Frisco. Bill Jones alongside Cowboys head coach Mike McCarthy as the Cowboys take on the New York Giants this week, a 325 kickoff at AT&T Stadium after a big win over the Carolina Panthers last week. We'll get into Carolina here in a second. Coach, let's talk about these Giants off the top, a team that's playing with some confidence after getting their first win of the year last week against New Orleans. Definitely. I mean, it's a team that's uh, clearly better than the record. I think the video shows that uh, without a doubt. That's the way we're approaching the game, you know, and, and obviously the division matchup and, and all the things that go into it. But, you know, they've lost two games with a walk, you know, by walk off field goal. Uh, very, very impressive win in New Orleans this past week. So uh, they, they bring a lot of excellent players and it looks like they're kind of finding a groove. Right, let's uh, I want to start by talking about the trenches and uh, and when you look at, uh, at what your offensive line has done not only last week but uh, in the first four games of this season it, it really makes a difference when you got those big guys back in that offensive line doesn't it I mean no doubt about it it sets the tempo for for everything that you do as a football team you know both offense and defensive line it starts up front it, no, I'm not trying to be cliche uh, it just gives you flexibility to get through your whole your whole game plan because uh, you know, you, you want to have some semblance of balance throughout the game. Uh, you want to be able to run it when you want to run it. You want to be able to throw it when you want to throw it. And, you know, and there's some points in the game that you have to throw it, and there's points in the game where you have to run it, and everybody knows that. So uh, it starts up front. Our guys are doing a great job. I, I'm really, I'm, I really like the, the whole network of communication between coaches and, and players, uh, the adjustments that are going on throughout the game. Uh, I, I think you definitely see that. We're able to stay in pretty clean looks, and, and, our, and our players are executing at a high level right now. And uh, when you look at this Giants team, in contrast to a week ago, when, when you look at what they've got on their in their front four on defense, they've invested heavily uh, with first-round picks in that line, and starting with Leonard Williams, who had 11 and a half sacks last year. Definitely, um, you know, and, and obviously had a, had a great year last year, and. Uh, you know, and, and it's really the key to their defense. You know, I, they put a lot on their defensive line. You can see just, you know, from the run gap responsibility, you know, how they attack it, you know, the different shells of defense. They're a multiple, multiple front team. Uh, so we're, we're, we're expecting many different looks. I have a lot of respect for Patrick Graham. Uh, I think he does an excellent job as a defensive coordinator. So we're really looking forward to the challenge. And, of course, Patrick Graham uh, coached uh, with you in, in Green Bay three years ago. All right, uh, your tight ends. The two tight end looks have uh, been key, uh, but the way Dalton Schultz and Blake Jarwin are both playing, not only uh, with what they can do in the passing game, but in particular the 47-yard run by Zeke. They both made key blocks on that play. What they what they were able to do in the run game, too, for you. Absolutely. Absolutely, I think their, their blocking has really improved, and it just not only you know the the attitude of it, but the execution. And and, and I think the the importance of staying in twelve personnel, two tight end offense, is the flexibility that they give you to, to be a spread offense, the flexibility to to be an eight gap run offense, and you know because they, they 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 give us that flexibility because they can they can both play on the ball, off the ball, and there's and, and and once again they're doing a much better job blocking at the point of attack. So those guys, those two guys are a big key to our offense. All right, we're just getting started on this edition of the Mike McCarthy Show. We've got David Moore, the Dallas Morning News, coming up next. Yeah, it's special. It's special. I've talked about just how selfless all these guys are and how um, how much they put their individual goals and success aside for the team success. I think the one thing that is um, you could tie that together is brotherhood. The Mike McCarthy Show, presented by Reliant, is brought to you by AT and T. Ford, built for Texas, built for you. The University of North Texas, proud partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Miller Lite, the only beer of the Cowboys. It's Miller time. And by Reliant, an NRG company. This segment is brought to you by the Dallas Morning News. Nobody does sports like Sports Day. Your home for complete Dallas Cowboys coverage. I mean, people have been looking for my welcome to the NFL moment. I think last night pretty much summed it up. So that was probably the biggest thing for me about the NFL. 
Yes, welcome to the NFL, Micah Parsons, and welcome to the Mike McCarthy Show. David Moore of the Dallas Morning News inside the Globe Life studio here. And uh, let's talk about the news of the past week. The big news is Jalen Smith uh, was released. Uh, what, do you, what do you think the real reasons are behind it? Well, you know, normally when you have a, a move of this magnitude during the season, it's one of two things. It's either that uh, there's tension building behind the scenes that the player is not accepting his role. Uh, they can see it's going to be an issue going forward and you want to address it. That in no way, shape, or form applied to Jalen Smith in, in this situation. Uh, nothing but the utmost professional, even though he did have a dwindling role in this defense. Uh, the, the other is sending a message. Now, rarely does a coach send a message when it's things are going well. But I think the message here with this release was that this, this defense is developing and coming together maybe a even a little more quickly than the coaching staff hoped it would. And when you, where you look at where it was going, it appeared to be leaving Jalen Smith behind. And, and I thought uh, one of the more interesting things that Mike McCarthy said during the week where he didn't get into any great detail about why it happened, and, and understandably so, but at one point he talked about, well, you can see what we've done defensively in these first four games. You can tell what we want to do, and this is about clarity of defensive packages and schemes which in my mind meant that Jalen was going to be part of even fewer packages going forward. So then you look at the salary, you look at where it's going, you look at what the inevitable at the end of the season where it was going to be. And I think it was clear this move was going to happen at the end of the season if not now, and they decided, let's go ahead and make the move now. As Parsons found out on Tuesday night, it is shocking when it happens. What, what effect do you think it has on the locker room? Uh, you know, again, I think – it's surprising because things are going well. Uh, you know, he was a captain for the game uh, against Carolina. Um, so it was just a reminder of everybody, and athletes all the time have to compartmentalize difficult news and still play. This, this hit them all hard from the standpoint of even when things are going well, you're not immune from the business side of, of this industry. Um, and it, it, it just kind of reminds everyone that, you know, be – be appreciative of where you are and what you're doing. And, and I'll say this too, on the way out, Jalen Smith delivered a message through Dan Quinn to the team uh, that basically said that. And of course, it didn't take long for Jalen to find a new NFL Not home at all. with the Green Bay Packers. David Moore, we appreciate it. We take a trip to the film room when we come back here on the Mike McCarthy Show. But first, more reaction from the locker room. Nobody wishes that on anybody. Um, but I mean, the statement he gave to, to DQ yesterday, and telling us to go get it and that he, he's he's got everybody's backs regardless of the situation that he's in uh just shows you the character and and the type of person he is so um yeah it's a tough situation it was unexpected for me uh i wasn't really expecting it but um you know the the business side of things is over my head you know i, I go out and play ball um but got a lot of respect for him uh for the little time that i've known him uh, great player, great person. Uh, like I said, nothing but respect for him. This segment was brought to you by the Dallas Morning News. Nobody does sports like Sports Day. Your home for complete Dallas Cowboys coverage. This segment is brought to you by Windstar World Casino and Resort, the casino of the Dallas Cowboys. Welcome back to the Mike McCarthy Show, powered by Reliant Energy. Bill Jones now joined by Will McClay. So we got the Telestrator out. We're going to take an up-close look at these New York Giants, starting on the defensive side of the football and that uh, stout front four that they've got. Yeah, one of the top defenses in the league and stopping the run. You can see why they've got a lot of big athletic guys there. They have three guys that are first or second round picks there. So up front, what they're going to try and do is they're going to play heavy. And what they do is they make the offense – use two guys to block one. You'll see here there's six offensive guys blocking. Well, they take up those six, and they have three free hitters to the ball. So that's how they play good run defense. They now, invested heavily in their defensive front, whether it was the, themselves drafting first-rounders or in the case of Leonard Williams, they got him from the Jets last year. Yes. Now we'll take a look at how you can affect them, okay? The, uh, but the Saints here, they've got a run-heavy personnel. They've got an offensive lineman in motion, think and run. So why does play action? Why do you have to run the ball? It freezes them. The linebackers come up. 
now you have time to drop back and now you have an opportunity to deliver your explosive plays. All right. On the offensive side of the ball, they've got Saquon Barkley back, and that is a big difference maker for them. Big difference maker. He's coming back into a form now. We're going to take a look at it here. You've got to play disciplined run defense when you play this guy because he can find a crease anywhere. Here you go. They're running an X stunt up here with the linebackers, but you see 99 get out of his gap. He's out of his gap. You're not playing uh, arm free, setting an edge, and now there's an explosive play. Now we'll show you how they did stop him later. All right, we'll take a look at this play. Now there's an edge to the defense with 96. Everybody's in their gap. Now his shoulders aren't facing north and south. They're to the sideline. And then that's how you can play good defense on him and limit his big plays. And the other thing that he does, he catches the football out of the backfield. Scored a touchdown when he wasn't covered, lining up as a flanker last week, but also in the screen game. Right? Yeah, I mean, this is a great way that uh, Jason Garrett's finding a way to get the ball in his hands. Okay, so they're going to run a screen here. They're going to get the ball to him in space. He's a dangerous space player. There you go. You got Lyman out in front, and there's so much space, and there's so much explosion this to him. We've got to be around him. We've got to limit those big explosive plays in the space. All right, Will McClay, we appreciate it. And let's hear what the players are saying about this matchup with the Giants. One cut, one, one play from making a play that's going to impact the game. So we just got to limit those as much as possible. Uh, they're really talented. You know, they got a lot of talent all across, the, all across the board. You know, they're a really good team. You know, the record might not say so, but they're a really good team. They got a lot of talent. So, you know, we got to come prepared. Kind of saw it last week, you know, Zeke definitely had a great game, running game. O-line did a great job of, you know, opening lanes, running lanes for the running backs, and uh, just giving Dak time to, you know, distribute the ball. And, you know, this offense is very explosive, and I'm glad to be a part of it. No, I mean, I think we're still trying to impose our will, um, and we're going to do it um, by whichever is, I guess, the easiest in a sense. We're not going to try to throw it just because we want to throw it, and we want to we wanna be hotheads and have a lot of – passing yards. If you're going to allow us to run, we're still going to impose our will with the way that we're running, with the plays that we're calling, with the style, with the bend backs, um, and just being who we are. And that, that's what we mean by imposing our wills is more, more of a mentality. And now joining me is Isaiah Stanback to break down this uh, Giants offense a little bit further. Jason Garrett, the offensive coordinator, he's been under some fire a little bit in New York, but not so much this week because Daniel Jones had a big week uh, last week in a win over the Saints. Yeah, they had a big win, and you best believe that this may not be a revenge game for Dak Prescott, but Jason Garrett still wants to – he doesn't like the rumblings of Kellen Moore being a great offensive coordinator, so you best believe he's going to be in his bag. And we saw a couple of examples last week against the Saints, the big win that they had – and this is just a simple screenplay that I'm going to show you guys here. But everybody knows about some of their weapons. They know we have Daniel Jones. They know that they also have Saquon Barkley. Galladay's their, their kind of their reception guy. Uh, they have big raw, small Ross who can, who can take the top off of things. But what about the little guy, Tony? Right? Tony. Kadarius Tony. Kadarius Tony, their first round draft pick. And I'm going to show you guys exactly where he is right here. All right, here he is sitting here in the slot. Now, simply put, most of the time when you're in, in this position right here, you're looking for five, ten yard gains. This guy, he wants more. And we're going to show you guys an example of just right here, exactly what they do. They're going to run a simple screenplay. They're running him up here to block. All right. He's going to run what we call a return route, which runs an out route to the sideline, and he's going to break it back underneath, inside, underneath all the coverage. Everybody else is simply working up. This guard gets out, works up and blocks, 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 blocks. Okay? Very simple. But – Think about how creative this is of Garrett to try to get the ball in his playmaker's hand. Here it is, the return route again. He comes back inside. Boom, he's going to catch this thing. He has linemen working up to block at the next level. And then watch how shifty this young man is once he gets the ball in his hand. One, two, three, four guys missed their, missed their tackles. This man is dangerous. I know they have a lot of other guys, but we need to keep our eye and keep a wrap around this young man right here. And very friendly for the young quarterback, Daniel Jones, right? Very friendly. All right, Isaiah, we appreciate it. More on Daniel Jones and this Giants offense when the coach rejoins us in just a moment here on the Mike McCarthy Show. The Mike McCarthy Show, powered by Reliant Energy, continues now inside the Globe Life studio here. At the star in Frisco as the head coach rejoins us now as we talk about these New York Giants. Let's turn our attention to the Giants offense and Daniel Jones, the Giants quarterback in his third year, off to his best start so far in his career and off to a great, had a great game last week against New Orleans, over 400 yards passing, but even on the season, 67% completion percentage, 8.2 yards per attempt. He's off to, and he's taking care of the football too. Definitely. I mean, that's definitely a big improvement from last year, but I, I Really like the way he plays, you know, both in the pocket, out of the pocket. I think he has, what, 178 
78 yards rushing also, too. I think he's their leading rusher. So um, he's you know making all the throws, playing with great confidence, and, and I agree. I think he's off to a great start so far this year. Well, and uh, on your defense, we, I think we're going to talk about Trayvon Diggs every week. But uh, what I want to ask you about Trayvon Diggs this week is just the competitive nature in the way that he approaches the game. You know, we saw it in training camp where he's matched up against C.D. every day in training camp. Mm -hmm. And you could see it. It was kind of birthed there, uh, but but it it's also an infectious thing. The the rest of the defense, don't you think? Oh, definitely. I mean, they're competing all the time. I mean, he's competing against everybody. So I mean, you love that, you know, Dak Prescott and, and just the, the whole re, you know perimeter group. So I uh, can't have enough about it. I think it speaks to our practice environment and the way our guys work every day. And, and he brings a ton of energy. And most importantly, it's definitely carrying over to the field. He's uh, you know player of the month and. He's working on player of the month number two right now. That's right, with uh, five picks in the first four games of the season. All right, the uh, Giants have gotten Saquon Barkley back, uh, had his best game last week, uh, but not only running the football, but also catching it too. Had a huge 54-yard uh, touchdown reception against the Saints last week. So you got to be concerned about him catching the ball out of the backfield too, right? Oh, no, definitely. He just ran right by the corner. I mean, he's, you know, he, he looks to be healthy, and I think just the – the extended time that they took to bring him back is, is obviously paying off. But no, we um, excellent tape. You know his ability to run all, obviously in between the tackles. But you know he definitely has that special ability to bounce the ball. And uh, you know he's a, definitely a weapon on the perimeter. All right, Randy Gregory had a couple of sacks last week. Uh, what do you what are you seeing out of Randy so far this season? Uh, very impactful. I mean, Randy's so disruptive. Uh, you know he's playing with he's playing with a whole different level of confidence this year. Um, I, I thought he played you know probably his best game of the year. Uh, this past week against Carolina, so uh, really proud of Randy and everything that he's doing. And um, you know, we need to continue to find ways to get him some more opportunities. You know, one of the really impressive things about this team is the selflessness that you see in in the players, both on offense and defense. Guys stepping up for each other, and but really, it, it, you look at it, and it, it's it may be one guy. It goes across the board, every position group. It seems like where different guys making plays different weeks. Well, definitely, and we have to have it. I mean, you know, we've, we've played 30 players in four games on defense. You know, that's um, that's uh, clearly I think it's the highest you know, stretch that I know particularly early in the season that it, that I've been a part of on either side of the ball. So uh, I, I think that speaks volumes. I think it's, it speaks volumes to the players and coaches and the, the ability to prepare and, and, and maintain a standard and keep trying to build off of that. But, yeah, I uh, love the vibe of the locker room. Uh, I love the way these guys get along, the interaction. Now, you know, things are good right now, and, and we're having – you know we're 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 playing quality football, and, and, and but the exciting part about it is we, we still have a lot of room to improve. And uh, these guys bring great energy every day to work. Uh, they're doing the little things, and we just need to continue to build off of that. And as we, particularly as we move through the week, getting ready for the Giants. All right, we wrap up this edition of the Mike McCarthy Show in just a moment. Right now, I think uh, the biggest thing is our turnover ratio. I mean, we're getting the ball. I mean, we've got to continue to build on that. Um, but, but yeah, I think, I think we're heading in the right direction right now. Final minute of the Mike McCarthy Show, powered by Reliant Energy inside the Globe Life studio here at the Star. And I want to close the show this week with the Mac package. That would be Connor McGovern. I love him at fullback. Oh. I think all Cowboys fans love what they're seeing at fullback. How can you not? <laughs> yeah. All right, running backs run to daylight, okay? In his position, he runs to darkness, and he clears a path of daylight for a running back. He, yeah. He's great at that spot. No, absolutely, and he's natural at it. And, and, you know, obviously a huge, powerful, huge, powerful man, but he's, you know, he's very light on his feet, you know, in, in his agility in that particular, you know, in those particular schemes that, that we've done so far has served him well and obviously has served us well. So love the package. Uh, you know, he's earned the opportunities. He's played very well in his opportunities last year and, and earlier this season. So we just wanted to make sure he was still part of it and uh, he loves it. And boy, well, I'll tell you what, just wait to see him carry the ball 10 times this week. It's going to be fun. <laughs> okay, we got a little little tip off yeah, there, yeah, the game plan. Yeah, you don't get cut that out, right? Now. You don't get that on every coach's show. All right, coach, we appreciate it. Good luck against the Giants. We appreciate all of you joining us for the Mike McCarthy Show. And we will see you again next week when the Cowboys hit the road to take on the New England Patriots. I mean, Connor McGovern coming in, uh, playing fullback, uh, jumbo tight end. So, I mean, it's a, it's a group effort. And, like, I think those guys, uh, they take pride in the work they put in. And um, I think it's, it's fun for, for them to go out there and match guys. I love that. 
<laughs> He's not carrying the ball this week. <laughs> the Mike McCarthy Show, presented by Reliant, was brought to you by Ford, built for Texas, built for you. Bank of America, the official bank of the Dallas Cowboys. Miller Lite, the only beer of the Cowboys. It's Miller time. Geico, switch today and see all the ways you could save. And by NFL Game Pass. You'll never miss a game again. Enjoy full and condensed game replays from week one to the Super Bowl.